Howdy, howdy, folks! It is Diecast Buffet here again. Welcome back to NASCAR Thunder 2003 or 2004 career mode. Onto the Food City 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway. Kurt Busch barely won Darlington, and I mean barely, because we couldn't get to his back bumper after leading the most laps, but the Winston Cup Series must roll on. Bristol, Texas, Talladega. Gonna get crazy, fellas. A great points day, nonetheless, that we were, I think, uh, 123 points out, give or take, only 89 points out uh, from the likes of Tony Stewart, five-time champion there. Uh, we, we held off, what, where, where's his, what's his face? Jeff Gordon, Mr. Four-time champion. We held him off at the end of that race as well. <sighs> so we're going to Bristol. We're probably going to destroy this race car, so that's uh, just a great, great thing to have. Uh, let's see how the team is doing, because usually, yeah, their happiness is in the toilet. Like, the front tire changer just says, I'm out of here. It's Chris Myers. <laughs> he wants to go back to the Hollywood Hotel. Uh, these guys, their happiness is in the toilet. Like, literally, the only thing they're required to do is be the engine builder, chassis builder, and uh, the fabricator. But they're unhappy. It's like, why? <laughs> it's like, you can't run a race team in this game without repairing and overhauling thing. That's the entire purpose of the requirement. Uh, it's just interesting. So we're going to Bristol. Uh, whatever we bring, we're probably not going to bring back in one piece. So uh, take that for uh, for a note. We've got our short track piece. It's got a big engine in it. but It's probably going to be on the back of a tow truck. But uh, you know what you got to do. Got to do what you got to do, fellas. So car rating 82. Let's go. Alrighty, folks, so he qualified 36th. Uh, yeah, terrible qualifying effort for Bristol. Uh, the eight car is on the pole. So uh, let's see how many laps it takes before we de destroy this beautiful race car. Welcome, everyone, to Bristol, Tennessee for today's NASCAR Winston Cup race, the Food City 500. This place has been referred to as the world's fastest half-mile oval. Add 43 cars to that, and you've got a recipe for some exciting racing. The fans here love watching this race. There'll be some bumping and banging out there in this one. I can assure you of that. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has a string of top fives going. His team is real excited about their success so far. In fact, I believe they'll have another top five race as long as he keeps the car out of trouble. Something a little out of the ordinary in this one for Andy Armstrong. You know, I spoke with the guys from that team in the garage this morning. And they said they tried a little something different in qualifying this week. They learned their lesson, though. Stick with what works, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The McDonald's car, who's currently in the top ten in points, will try to reach the next step, the top five. Yeah, he needs to focus in this race. A poor finish can quickly bounce you out of the top ten, but a win can gain you several positions and might even put you in the top five. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, here we go. Uh, got a random looking Goodyear car in the front row. We get the eight car. Uh, Tony Stewart next to another fancy driver, and Elliot Sadler. Top five run. Out of Boyd there. Alright, fellas, it's going to be Bristol. It's going to be interesting and a little food for thought. You know what's interesting to me? Even though this game is nearly 20 years old, even all the teams and the sponsors that paid to have their logos in this game are still getting advertisement. 20 years later just about isn't that just kind of fascinating and maybe that's why these teams should stay in nascar because sponsorship works all right here we go 50 laps gonna be a demo derby get your popcorn get your beef jerky whatever you want and uh, we're already making friends on the racetrack that is great so the car it felt extremely fast in qualifying but apparently it wasn't whoa almost ran over tina gordon there uh, we got to be careful about redlining the engine. That's just the way the RPMs work. But, I mean, at this point, we're already thinking pitch strategy. I'm, I'm thinking, what can I do to leapfrog the field? Sorry, 16, that was 100% my fault. And they're probably not the only car to get screwed over. Because we're going to have to... I mean, I don't know what we're going to do, guys. 
We're going to have to run over a bunch of cars. We're going to have to try some pitch strategy just to get a decent finish. This car's handling just is awful. I mean, awful. Look, I mean, look how loose this car is, guys. I mean, a qualifying trim, it's not terrible, but when you're racing in traffic, you need something that you can rely on. I don't know, man. <laughs> this is going to be one tough uh, event to survive. I mean, look at this. We're not even we're not even gaining ground on on Johnny Benson ahead of us in 34th. Clearly, he doesn't have a good car today. And you can just hear the RPMs. It's just yeah, we're we're in danger of being a lap down in 10 laps. That's that's where it's starting to feel like. Because there's not enough cannon fodder behind us, and we're already getting hit up by uh, Steve Park. Okay. Feels like it's on ice. That's how. That's why this car is all over the racetrack. It's like any movement with the analog, and it sends it across. And you're just constantly having to check it. Uh, this is not looking good, fellas. And that's why you race so hard at the tracks that you're great at. Or I say great, but you, you, you've had statistically you've had success at, right? Let's just be honest. Darlington's one of those tracks. Those extra five bonus points we got by making sure we led the most laps, right? Pay dividends because that's one extra position we don't have to worry about at Bristol. You know what I'm saying? If you string together, you know, a lot of bonus points throughout the season, it can pretty much be one uh, full race's worth of points. I mean, we are really going to be a lap down here soon. If we don't, if a caution doesn't brew and we don't get an opportunity to work on this thing, I don't know what we're going to do because this this is embarrassing. Oh, contact, yep. Or we be the caution and get lapped in the process, which helps no one. Because <laughs> that would be my luck. I would I would end up spinning out, and then the uh, the leader would go by before the cutscene triggers, uh, before you know it rounds everybody up. And then we pretty much be really screwed. There is absolutely no way we're going to get a top 30 with a car like this. And this is an 82 power engine, I might add. 82 power. To put this in perspective, in quick race, your engine is a level 80 in power. So, my point is, is that the car should be fantastic, but I think we need to get a new driver. <laughs> Because this is bad. Uh, lap 13, lap 14, please, Lord, we need a caution. Somebody just drop, a, just drop a cylinder on the racetrack. Have an oil pan fly out. I don't give a hoop. Throw a beer keg on the racetrack. Something. I mean, we're going to have to push this engine to the point where it's going to probably blow up. And then we're going to be screwed when we go to Martinsville because... Whenever that comes up, we might not have this thing repaired in time, depending how, um, you know, it'd be two races or one race um, for whatever repairing or second speedway car. So the point is, is that it could get uh, dicey. We might have to use a second speedway car. Nonetheless, love that 01 uh, paint scheme ahead of us. Oh boy, yep, we're getting really loose off the corner now. Tires are shot, leader is coming. Please, just throw a yellow. I mean, I... Could they, like... Could you just buy a yellow? Could I just go to Mr. Hendrick and just say, Look, just just buy NASCAR a yellow. Just buy one from him. Let him throw a phantom debris caution at this point. Go to Joe Gibbs. Go to Penske, whatever. Just just please throw a freaking yellow at this, at this point. This is embarrassing. I mean, you can just see the red line on the tack. When it's in that 9 to 10 range, which is 10,000 RPMs. Um, yeah, 9 to 10,000 RPMs. That thing is close to, to over-revving, and then it, it'll start poofing out white smoke like that car on the inside. Tough break for the 41 camp. And then once that happens, you pretty much have to pit, or your engine's going to go from gray smoke to black smoke, and then your day's done. And when your day is done, guess what? You have to feel that for the next couple weeks because you're going to have to repair that entire engine. A 100 uh, condition engine will quickly go to a 62 condition engine. So, pit stops are underway. 
I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to have to try something contrarian. So I'm going to stay out long and hope and pray for a caution. Because that's all we really can do at this point. I feel like even if we pit early and just try to just make it up on fresh tires, I feel like we're just that slow that it's not even going to help us. And the, the best strategy is just to run as long as we can and hope we get you a, a Mickey Mouse caution. Because we need one. Somebody glitch out on pit road because the leader is behind us. Okay, now he's pitting. Cool. Now, who's the new leader? Oh, he's behind us too. Wow, that's pretty good. Wow. I mean, what is this? Baldy's basics? We're about to get screwed out here, y'all. Fuel tank almost empty. We have to pit this next time. By all oh, kinds, throw the caution too, please. Throw the caution. Come on, crash. Someone, anybody. I got the pit now. Dang it. Yeah, we have no choice. We're going to have to pit here. Pause it so we can get our adjustments. Obviously, you got to take four. You can't try to gamble. What do we do to this car, guys? This thing's got more gremlins than a horror movie. I mean, what do you, what do, you do? I mean, my goodness. I'm just going to lower the PSI and see if that helps with it. Because at this point, I've I've lost all hope in this car. It is that bad. I'm going to knock on wood, though. And we can uh, maybe catch a caution and something will get turned around. How y'all doing out there, fellas? Uh, if you can, give the video a thumbs up <laughs> for me enduring this <laughs> horrible race car. Now, honestly, it's probably the driver's fault. It's probably not the race car's fault, you know. Uh, horrible pit stop, 17.7. We, we, we gotta reevaluate this pit crew, guys. That's bad. That's bad, y'all. That's nah, all good. So we're 39th. Uh, we still can get some positions, but I, I don't know. We tightened the car up a little bit. Um, we took away some of the um, acceleration. So I'm hoping maybe that'll give us a little bit better throttle control. I don't know. I, I have no idea what we're going to be able to do with this race car. We're 39th. We're still racing for position, though, with some of these drivers. Because, let's just face it, short track racing. Uh, if you're off the pace by a fraction, you're going to go a lap down. Especially at Bristol. But, um, man, a caution would just be just be marvelous right now. Come on, Kenny Wallace. Dump Tony Stewart. I don't care. Just crash. Uh, anything. Look at these. They're running three wide. Just crash. Someone, please. Get everybody lined up and let's race it out. Sorry, four car, but I'm going to have to start making some moves, buddy. There we go. 38. I'm running that yellow line. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't wreck it. I was about to say, I'm running the yellow line, and I'm kind of afraid the apron is going to catch me and spin me around and send me two laps down. But at this point, what's the difference? I got to door bang some of these guys if I'm going to get some positions. How is Scott Wimmer in 37th in that Ganassi car? Gosh, dog it, man. This car is just... It, 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 is, it is bad. This is one of the worst Bristol cards I have ever had. Oh, don't want to run over Burton. Oh, he tapped the fence. He tried to dodge us. That was my fault. I, I don't know. I, I just go ahead, warm up the truck. Let's get this thing on the way to Fort Worth because uh, we need to get the Biff out of Bristol because this track is not for me. <laughs> I don't know what to do, guys. I mean, I mean, we're overdriving every corner, and we're still not able to to make competitive passes on most of these cars. We lift in the corner so we have a sharper apex. I, I just truly don't know. Bristol is one of the toughest tracks to qualify in this game because, I mean, it's just it's tough. You have to hit all your marks, and you got to be nearly perfect, but. I don't know. I don't even know who's leading this race. We'll, we'll figure that out in a moment. Let me get on the straightaway. We'll, we'll see how the, uh, the leaders are going. Okay, it's Earnhardt. He is just in a zip code of his own at this point. Uh, Gordon's at the bottom. No! Bad, 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 bad. 
tearing up the right side of this car, so uh, we'll be able to sign some autographs and <laughs> cut some sheet metal on the parking lot. That's always fun. Gotta love some good souvenirs. 38 out of 50 here. I'm surprised we didn't get a caution, honestly. You know, sometimes with these Bristol pit stops, they get a little bit Mickey Mouse, and uh, they'll glitch out. Whether it's the 22 car, which technically the 22 car is retired from this game, the Ward Burton one. Uh, it's the uh, 22 car that, uh, car that's originally driven by Tina Gordon, but in this playthrough it's driven by uh, Ben Baldwin or something. Uh, but uh, usually that car would bring out some cautions. I think I've seen a few other cars do it as well. It's something about the first pit box on pit road. Uh, whatever it is, it is it's a saving grace at times, but half the time it doesn't happen, so... You really got to be lucky. I, I can't steer this car to save my life. I mean, we whatever setup we brought to Bristol, take it, ball it up, and throw it in the trash can. It ain't worth it, Chief. I mean, try not to run over Jeff Burton because he's not for position. But, I mean, at this point, I got to make some moves. I, I got to make some moves, guys. I mean, we ain't going to reuse the body of this car probably ever again because it's so beat up. But I, I need some points. I mean, we gotta we got to minimize the damage here. I will say, though, tightening up the race car uh, definitely helped it out, though. Because it's not as loose as it was earlier, but you could just see how insanely loose this car is. I'm not sure if the 02 car here, if Coy Gibbs is a lap down or not. Uh, he is, so that is for position. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying. The car shouldn't even be handling this bad either. Like, it's just... It needs just more mechanical grip, like the setting. I, I think we have the parts. It's just we don't have the setup. And that's the bad thing. You only figure this out after you go to Bristol. Well, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> you only work on your setup when you go back to Bristol. And by the time I get to recording that, I usually forget what I need to do to the race car. Like if I was in, you know, practice or whatever right now. Okay, I need to fix this, 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 and this. I'll tell you what, short track racing has been hit or miss this year for us. It has really been hit or miss. This guy dumped this at Rockingham, so he could, he could catch a hike for all I care. How is the number six car? That was stupid. But hey, it got us a caution. <laughs> uh, I was going to try to dump him for Rocket Hand there, but I ended up wrecking myself. <laughs> he dumped us that Rocket Hand on the last lap, and we dumped ourselves trying to wreck him. Oh, boy. That's Bristol for y'all, guys. That is Bristol. What a crapshoot that was for our team. Oh, boy. So, Junior just, just I mean, just smoked the whole show. Qualified on pole. Led nearly every lap. Probably would have led all of them if it wasn't for the pit stops. And uh, we're going to find ourselves in 34th. But, hey, uh, it's all good. We took care of the, the, the we hit the, the, the 103 car. I was going to try to dump him there because, one, he was a bad rival to begin with. He was going to block us, but... I was ready to dump him, and we ended up dumping ourselves. That's how bad that car handled. Like, when I hit him, it was that loose. Pretty bad. So, anyways, thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope to see you in the next episode of NASCAR Thunder 2004. Uh, hopefully, we don't crash out. Uh, feel free to use that promo code down, down below for Circle B Diecast. It helps out the channel. You don't have to, but if you do, um, you're cool, and if you don't, well, you're cool still. So uh, that's all for now. Uh, here's a quick look again at the top 10. Great run for McMurray and Elliot Sadler. Uh, Roush Coutiers, Jeff Burton, top five. That's pretty cool. That's all for now. Diecast Buffet, signing off.